What's up, Bandic folks? Welcome back to the show. Unfortunately, Phil couldn't be here today. He's got emergency dad duties to do. So this is my first time um, hosting an interview by myself. I've never done this myself, so uh, God, God help us. We are joined today by Luke and Matt from Naked Bird. <laughs> How's it going? Luke is the guitarist of Naked Burn. Matt, you're the singer of Naked Burn. Before we get into the Naked Burn stuff itself, uh, this band seems to be a band that um, has a lot of talent on the stage and off the stage. And I do want to dive into both of your guys' careers. So to start out, Luke, you're a music producer. You're an audio engineer. People have probably constantly heard us talking about your audio production work at this point, covering bands like Sewn, Pathfinder, Cruel Intent, probably a bunch of other stuff I can't think of. And Matt, you're an accomplished cinematographer and a photographer as well. A lot of the videos that we've reacted to, we kept seeing the Portray All logo. Yeah. And it's interesting to see that you're attached to that as well. So you've worked on videos from like Sewn, Itis, uh, Rarity, I believe you did. Yeah, just recently I did some like recap stuff for them, but I didn't do a music video with them. Oh, but I did still some, worked with Rarity. I did some recap still work cool. with them. It's yeah. still cool. Yeah, Dead Days, yeah. Um, pretty important video for Single Wound. So you've worked with a lot of the friends of this show as well. So yeah, I do want to dig into both of your guys' skills, if that's okay. Before we dig into the actual Naked Burn stuff itself, this is like a sort of musicians for musicians kind of show, I find. So mm -hmm. um, anyone in the audience who's looking for like video work done or like recording and mixing, this is probably a really good episode for you. So, yeah, so I'll uh, just, I guess, a lot of the questions I have for each of you are similar. So I'll just sort of take turns. Um, so for Luke, when did you actually start recording and mixing music? Oh, man. It's been, I want to say officially about eight years now. Okay. I think I like, I started, prof if you want to call it professional, <laughs> started professionally working with bands and artists uh, following school. So that would have been around 2015, 2016. Uh, but of course, like I was recording my own band and my friends and stuff uh, long before that. Um, but yeah, it, it probably would have been around then is basically when I started getting paid. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's been ever since then. <laughs> nice. And um, I guess, obviously, respectively, Matt, uh, when did you start doing video work? Um, I think I, well, I started like shooting photos and stuff for bands when I was in college, which was way too long ago, I guess, at this point, six years ago, maybe seven years ago. And uh, I started doing video work, weirdly enough, like during the first year of the pandemic, which was about five years ago now. Um, 2019 or I guess 2020 so four years ago um, yeah I kind of got hooked up with like a, a video job during that time that a friend of mine referred me to and he was like yeah here's an upcoming videographer photographer take you know take him under your wing kind of thing and then from then on I kind of just like fell in love with video work and that was like my main focus after I did that job um, it was like filming live session stuff for like during the pandemic, um, they had like a live session series with musicians and it mm -hmm. was like filming those. And I filmed like 25 of them or something that summer. Oh, wow. Um, and that, yeah, and I <laughs> barely did any video work before that. They didn't really know that. My friend just trusted me enough to refer me and they was like, all right, you'll be good enough. Um, and then that was basically that. So. Was it, did you just sort of learn on the fly when you started getting work or was it just sort of? Kind of. Yeah, I didn't know much about lighting and stuff like that when I first started doing that type of video work. Um, I was more of like a just pick up the camera kind of guy and just like film outside. But those those videos taught me a lot about like actual cinematography and lighting and like how to actually make a scene look good and like light it from scratch and stuff. So mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was sick. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, your guys' videos look great. That was one of the things I immediately noticed in our react was just like how good the video was for a, a, like a new band coming out. It's always such a good way to make an initial splash mm -hmm. and yeah everything's starting to make sense now that i've done a little bit of research on why things sound yeah, it's all adding up well i i remember too i actually met matt i hired him as a photographer for my like old old band and that's that's when we met when i think you were like 22 or something I was <laughs> like, so young. yeah it was we it's were just younger. starting like i just started seeing your pictures around you know like the scene like taking all these band photos 
Um, and, and that was like shortly after you just started getting into videos. But since I met Matt, because I, of the quality of work he did, I just told every band like, Hey, this guy does videos too. Like he's probably one of the best, uh, eyes that I've seen, you know, doing this kind of stuff. So I just re started referring everybody. And that's kind of also why you're seeing that connection. Like outside of, we only started playing in a band about a year ago, but like before that I was just, you know, like my buddy just does great videos. So, um, but yeah, that's part of that connection. <laughs> yeah. So to give a little uh, local love then, I guess, um, what would be like, so uh, I'll start with you this time, Matt. That way you get a fair amount of time to think about the question in between. Uh, what would you say are some of your like proudest or some of your favorite videos that you've shot for people? Oh, that's kind of hard. I guess you like do a lot of like heavier bands, probably more people like, or like more like, yeah, local, like heavier punk and metal bands. So I would say out of like that kind of, genre honestly i think the stuff we've done with sewn it was really sick honestly i think mm. the sewn videos have been some of my favorites especially the last video where we did like the candle the yeah. candle we were blown, like, like, inside of the whole we were blown away by that video i don't know if you've watched our reaction to that video but we were like like so much of the talk was about how crazy we thought the video was so yeah that, that <laughs> yeah. was a great mm -hmm. video. yeah I would say, yeah, the, yeah. Then even like the first video we did with them, yeah, yeah, that one, that one was a lot of fun. Yeah, with the cage and stuff, that was sick. Um, but yeah, besides that, like, I mean, like I said, that that series that I did during the pandemic was really cool to do, and I think it always has a place in my heart. Like having that being like one of my first big video jobs, and I honestly, I worked with a lot of like pretty bigger artists at the time too. That I was like kind of like shook that i was like kind of in these rooms so um some of those videos have definitely been some of my favorites um and that led to a lot of other opportunities like i got to shoot some videos inside of union station which was another okay. uh, concert series that we did which was insane like in union station at like two in the morning That's sick. and shooting yeah and like shooting these musicians and it, it was it was honestly really fun. So yeah, it's, definitely that was probably one of my favorite jobs. That's the type of thing where when you're walking through unionization, you'd be like, oh, it'd be so sick to shoot a video here. Like to actually get to do it yeah. is absolutely crazy. Yeah, it was awesome. So And then, yeah, Luke, definitely. um, what's some of your favorite songs that you've produced for people around Man. here? Man, that's a hard one. <laughs> or songs where you're like, you're just really proud of the mixing and mastering. Yeah. Done. Well, I think even beyond mixing and mastering, like, I'm going to use Sewn again because I actually was very involved with a lot of the writing for those okay. songs too. Um, you know, so like, because of that, I definitely have like a, it has a special place in my heart mm -hmm. with those songs, like Heartworm, especially, uh, you know, I, at the time I had been working with Cruel Intent uh, recording their EP and uh, you know, they, they knew each other, like obviously everybody's friends in the scene, but like just teaming Paul up with uh the stone guys and, and kind of making like something happen to me was like one of the highlight moments for mm -hmm. me. Um, also cruel intent, honestly, like they're one of my favorite deathcore bands in the scene. I think they are like incredible. It's just, you know, they, they haven't really put out everything yet. Unfortunately, uh, it's been taking, there's reasons behind that, but it's been taking some time. Um, but the EP that we recorded last, I think it was April, uh, which they're just slowly rolling out now. Some of my favorite work that I've ever done. And like, I had a blast with those guys, just like hanging out, partying, making music, you know? <laughs> yeah, we, um, we watched the Primal party. Abyss video. We have, um, we have a reaction coming up for that soon. Uh, did you do any work on that video, Matt? No, no, yeah. no. Sorry, I, didn't, but I, I tilted my head under... over and thought you would realize I was talking to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they are on my radar though. So I did, I did they, recommend Luke's them. Been, yeah, Luke's been bugging them to shoot with me, but that I, uh... one, uh, that one was done by Brett uh, Wright uh, and his wife uh, or girlfriend from Loser. If you know that okay. band, I think I've heard, I've heard the name. L I don't think I've heard the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he also shoots videos. Also, really great. Um, you know, and he did the Primal Abyss one. I think he's done a couple other ones. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely. that seemed like a that seemed like a pretty sick video too. Yeah, no, it was yeah, cool. That one, it. yeah, that one seemed cool too. So, uh, if three's too many, or if you feel like I'm putting you on the spot, you can answer one. You can answer none. Um, there's no rules here. But uh, so I guess I'll start with you, Luke. What would be like your top three like dream artists to work with, it, local or otherwise? Let's say. Ooh. Okay. I've been asked this before and it's always a different answer. Okay. Um, I'll say this. 
I'm going to throw one of my favorites on there. Uh, although, do I really want to work on that? <laughs> I don't want to be put on the spot like that. <laughs> um, I'll say this. From from a local standpoint, I'll, I'll try and mix it up. Okay. From a local standpoint, probably one of my favorite bands is seen right now that I haven't worked with, but I definitely would love to work with is uh, Panic Response. Yeah, great band. I think they're really Fun cool band. guys. Great band. Yeah, super cool. In and outside of music, you know. Um, love their music. I definitely feel that. like we could do some cool shit. Um, yeah, so that's probably number one. Number two, I feel like it would be insane, but it would be they're they're one of my favorite bands. So like, I I definitely have to put them up there. I would love to work on a Tool record. Okay, just because there's so much. Interesting. Yeah, like there's just so much behind the scenes stuff. I'd love to be a part of. I've actually met. Uh, and uh, worked with to some capacity with their producer or one of their producers, okay. uh, David Bottrell. You know, he was talking about the, re the records that he did and, you know, just the little bits of information that he gave. Uh, I, like, I was blown away and fascinated by it. So I feel like it'd be really cool, especially because they're such an elusive band to behind, be behind the scenes mm -hmm. with that. Um, and then a third one. Let's see, who could I plug in here? <laughs> um, I feel like I want to do more hardcore records. So I'm going to try and pick a hardcore band. Uh, one of my, I, I've met a couple of the members. I'm not like friends with everybody, but um, I would love to work with uh, Camaro. Okay, yeah, they're such band, a stick know. band. But yeah. <laughs> this is not <laughs> yes, a band, yeah, this yeah. is yeah. a car. Full, like it's so Yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. So I, sick. I mean, I've, I've uh, worked with some of the guys on another project. Uh, they came by the studio, record some drums and stuff. Um, but you know, I just I love the music, I love the vibes. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a cool record. Yeah, they're yeah. they're a fun band. They're a band that found such an interesting way to make it immediate that you're not supposed to take it seriously, no matter what. Like the vocals <laughs> are, like it's yeah, uh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So um, yeah, I'm sure it's obvious what I'm gonna ask you, Matt. But um, three artists you'd like to film for. And Luke's dropping all these locals, and I feel pressured. <laughs> no, no, I blow blow it wide to. open. I, just... I, I said dream artist. Uh, Keeping it locals cool. Yeah, honestly, I'm honestly, I think, I think that for sure. I mean, I talk to Luke about this band all the time, but I would want to work with Balance and Composure, hundred okay. percent, okay. because yeah. they're fucking sick, and I they've been one of my favorite bands for a very long time. Um, and honestly. Their new videos are sick, but they're not that sick. <laughs> like, uh, I think they could be cooler, honestly. So I'm just like, I'm like, fuck, I want to get in there hit and fucking, <laughs> yeah, hit them off and like, there you go. You trying to, trying to work with me or what? Like them. And then honestly, oh man, I think, I, I think I want to do some, like, I do like doing heavy videos a lot um i think that i would want to shoot with kublai khan okay, okay. yeah okay. or yeah Kub yeah yeah kublai khan or boundaries okay yeah just yeah huge heavy hitters yes yeah for I, me I yeah put that in my list i know <laughs> i was i was listening to the new boundaries record on the way here and i was like this fucks like <laughs> yeah. i would love to create like a brutal fucking video for one of those two bands um and then the last band i would say honestly I'm just gonna say it just because I've been uh, like addicted to them lately, but fucking Dayseeker, man. Okay. Dayseeker is like I just got into them in the past like six months, and I don't know what it is. Like maybe because I got fucking dumped, but their music is just <laughs> fucking sick as shit. Like, and it just hits, you know. And I I love their sound. I think that like the like kind of ethereal vibe of the videos that like I'm able to produce would work so well with like with their music and i just yeah i'd love to meet them and just fucking work with them so maybe i'll hit them up when they come to toronto and give them a little email be like yo rory i love you you know what's up, what's up? so those three yeah, yeah. base seeker boundaries bouncing opposure and i'll throw in a local okay just to be give them some love yeah, give them man, some just love to be fair. give them give, give some local love to the scene um honestly i think i'd fucking love to work with seventh dose yeah yeah because cool. they're doing some cool shit i was talking to andrew the other day and i really fuck with their sound i think they're they just look fucking sick too like and mm -hmm. i think they have a cool aesthetic and i think it would work really well for a video and i would love to do like a trippy 
shoegazy yeah, yeah kind yeah. of like you could do a really trippy video with the type of music they yeah make. yeah like a dream state mm-hmm. like kind of vibe um so yeah those those five i guess named five yeah nice uh so to throw you right back on the spot then right away um in terms of uh, let's say cinematography specifically um what are some things you wish you knew at the beginning of going into it Honestly, I think one of the biggest things that I wish I knew when I started that was pushed a lot, um, that was like kind of bullshit in my opinion, was a lot of people saying that gear doesn't matter. I think that was one of the biggest things that was pushed a ton when I started. And they made it sound like you could get wherever you wanted to go with any camera. And I was like, and I realized that that is was not the case. Like, as soon as I got a better camera, I started getting a lot more work and I wish I invested in myself sooner instead of taking the advice of people saying gear doesn't matter, whatever, because, um, especially when it comes to video, like it, it does matter. And like, you should invest in yourself and you shouldn't be walking around with, you know, cheap gear, trying to charge people (laughs) really expensive prices. Right. Like, and to, to move up into your career, you have to invest. And I think that that's something I ignored for a while. Like I didn't invest um into like better equipment and also that like realistically um i think one of the biggest things is the vibe honestly on set like that's what people want they want to enjoy the process like the product matters a lot but they want to enjoy the process of actually shooting with you and that's something that like i noticed that um like you know when i used to shoot with portrayal or any of my other shoots like people would always say like we just like being on set with you guys because it's fun and it doesn't feel like we're actually working we're just having a good time but shit's getting done still Like shit's getting done, but we're laughing. Like, and that's the biggest thing is like, honestly having fun with it and treating people nicely. And, um, I wish I like thought about that, like earlier on is that like, you got to really like foster those like relationships with people, make sure you're like taking care of that. And that's like, honestly, the most important thing, because there's a lot of good videographers out there. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, but if you can't be friends with your clients and like get along with them on set and have fun and laugh and crack jokes. It's, it's a long 12 hour day. I'll tell you that right now is when you have yeah. a, you're working with a crew who's like dysfunctional and they're not having fun. It's can get pretty shit. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I completely agree with you. Actually. I actually have like, I used to say it job interviews all the time that like, I'm like, I'm sure like you can train anyone to do this job, but like, I want to make sure that you guys actually want to spend 40 hours a week yeah. around mm-hmm. me. You know what I mean? Which you see is so much more important. We'll always remember someone who was easy to work with versus someone who maybe, you know, had it look slightly better in the end. You want the person you had a better experience. Yeah, with. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Luke, what about, what about you? Um, things you wish you knew as a beginner. I mean, it's kind of the same thing as what Matt's saying. There's, especially in the audio world, there's a lot of bad advice out there. Um, And a lot of it is centralized around gear naturally, because especially as musicians, like, you know, we love to nerd out about things, but I'm not going to say that gear matters. Like it matters to a point that I think, I think the main thing is like, you got to earn it, right? You got to earn the next upgrade. In my opinion, you have to know why something isn't, going to be like like why you would have to invest you know by spending the time with the piece of crap gear right um so that's always like very important but i think like honestly i'm I'm really big with all the bands that i work with on like trying to just invoke creativity um and so what i like to do when i in kind of like how this studio uh uh, is shaped and like how we have things arranged is I, I just like to have things ready to go uh, that I know work like pieces of gear, like whether it's a guitar or a, you know, like a certain microphone, like I just try to have things set up so that within seconds, you know, we can just focus on being creative and not worry too much about the mm-hmm. technical side of things, you know? So um, we've definitely like me and my studio partner, Kyle, we've invested in a lot of, pieces of equipment that aren't necessarily like the most expensive thing. Cause I don't think that's necessarily necessary. Um, but things that we know will work in a pinch and like, just help us get to the results faster. And that's even something like Matt was actually saying to me the other day, because we were, we were doing some writing is like, when we do a lot of writing and mixing and whatever, like 
me, me and Kyle, we tend to work pretty fast and we tend to like, just try and get to the finished result really fast. And like, even when we're just bouncing off like rough mixes, they're pretty close to how the final version will sound. And that's just like, that's a, just a testament to buying, you know, those select pieces of gear that those plugins, like having the things. Yeah. Just yeah. things that are tried and true. Like it doesn't have to be anything crazy specific. Um, but you know, even just like, like an amp, right? Like I have a 5150, uh, which is like one of the most popular metal amps. Yeah. It's the best. It's the best amp. It's and so like when a band one. walks in and they have their gear and you know, if it's good, I'll use it. I'm, I'm, I love, you know, messing with stuff, but it's always good to have that fallback of like, Hey, like, this guitar kind of sounds like crap. Let's just use the 5150 and just get to the point. Cause like, I'd rather focus on that. And I think that's what makes better records. It's what makes better, like, you know, time efficiency when we're in the studio, which is a, a big thing. You know, there's always a lot to do, a lot of people to, to manage. So I just want to make sure that, you know, things are moving, things are flowing. Um, and yeah, like Matt was saying, it's like, I just want to make sure the vibe's good. So if we can get to the results faster, then to me, it's like, that that's the kind of thing that I want to have around at all times. Well, and honestly, to add on to that too, is like when you're talking about equipment and stuff like that, it's like the, the having the right things for anything. It's like, you don't want the client to be thinking about the gear, right? So if you're shooting something or you're recording something and you have something messing up and you don't have the right tool for the job, and then you're, pa- you're waiting around, you're trying to fix things and stuff. Like it's such a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Like, it's such a nightmare. Like even when you're shooting videos and, and clients don't want to like have the extra gear, like rent it out. They don't want to pay for it. I'm like guys spend the extra hundred, 200 to have it. Because if we're on set and we need this and we don't have it, we're going to be fucked. Like <laughs> we're going to be screwed. Mm-hmm. Like, like it, you always should have more ready because then it just creates a better experience for the client. And like, it's all about the client experience on fucking set or yeah, in the recording and like yeah. even yeah i mean we'll probably get like, more into it but home studios and stuff are great obviously and i i started it from a home studio and i'm yeah. a big advocate for it but like again like i deal with a lot of clients when it comes to like mixing and mastering who um you know they just get the cheapest interface to get or cheapest microphone whatever and they think like okay like now i'll get professional recordings and it's like you can get good recordings but you know it it's just like why waste all this time chasing something when you could just buy that thing? <laughs> you know, yeah, like, if you're making money, yeah, yeah, like yeah, if I, you're I making mean, money I, within reason. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I obviously and say this that. is all within reason. It's like if you know that your career is starting to advance, you got to invest in yourself. Like, mm-hmm. and that's a big. It's that's a, another part of it too is trusting yourself too that you're fucking good enough and don't get like you know. Well, that's it. It's, it's having syndrome. confidence. It's confidence to what get use, that yeah. gear. Yeah, confidence in what you use. Confidence to know that you that you can handle it, that you can invest in this and you can make the money back. It's like an investment to yourself. Because when you buy that really nice set of speakers or that nice new microphone or that nice new amp, you're like, okay, time to fucking grind. Yeah. Let's go. Like no it's time excuses. to fucking go. No more excuses. I just spent like four grand. <laughs> like I need to make this back. Like, let's fucking go. Yeah, no. It gives you that push. I don't know. That makes For sense. me, it gives me the push. No, I'm yeah. I'm the same way. I'd, I've never spent 4K on a single no. PC. Gear, but uh, I yeah. I don't own a guitar. Um, I own one guitar that's over a thousand dollars. Yeah, yo, Luke's guitar. Luke is tracking my guitars on squires like, now. Yeah, like I don't care, man. Yeah. I don't I don't want the Fender. The squires, squires are sick. I I I recently started playing guitar again. I played. I'm left handed. I played guitar right handed for like years, and I could just there was a hump I could never get over, and then I finally bought like a left-handed guitar and started playing and i was just trash again like couldn't calm you <laughs> like couldn't do anything um but i've been reteaching myself left-handed and it feels way more natural mm-hmm. and one of the first guitars i bought was just like a 300 dollars amazon squire telecaster and like i swear to god like i sold it and i regret it all the time because like the neck felt incredible on the thing and i just should have thrown news like pickups in it or something and instead i've been like chasing buying new guitars because i just haven't felt at yeah, home yeah. again with well, it so yeah that yeah. goes with the gear yeah, that goes with the gear thing too is fucking well, having yeah, stuff that you're thing. comfortable with yeah it doesn't have to be the most expensive doesn't, thing exactly. as, long, as long as you you're confident yeah. and it works and you know in a lot of cases if it's tried and true like you like you know for guitars it might be like the marshall amp or this 6505 like i was saying like then i think it, you're just going to focus more on what actually matters which is being creative and you know getting the results that you want yeah cool yeah 
and and with guitar plugins and stuff like that now too like amp simulators and stuff like it's relatively cheap to get to a pretty decent place oh uh, i don't want to give too many secrets out but those like for example those zone songs are all amp sims neural and it's just, dsp like it's just because well yeah because it neural it, yeah it was the yeah. gojira yeah. neural just because yeah. we just wanted we were writing in the studio and working on these songs and i was like i don't have time to just like go dialing and fiddle Dial i was like i just need a tone, tone yeah. and let's just like work on it and what you hear is pretty much what you get right so yeah that's it so uh for people who might um be coming into your studio one day uh what would you say is your biggest pet peeve in the studio <laughs> no I, I already know the answer no <laughs> I'll answer for you. <laughs> he. <laughs> He's like. <laughs> no, 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 don't put this in. Don't put this in. <laughs> like you have to be prepared when you come to the studio. Yeah. Um, I will say I think I think more than that though, because like everybody's circumstances are different. Of course, I think what's most important is just having an open mind coming into the studio. You know, so even if drums aren't working out today. It's like having the open mind of saying, listen, like it, we know we're just going to get a better result with MIDI drums. So let's not shoot ourselves in the foot and do this for another five hours, you know, and, and not really like the results. Let's just go straight to that thing that, you know, we know works. It's kind of based off of what we just said in the last question. But um, yeah, like my biggest pet peeve is musicians who just like they're super stuck in their ways. They want things done like in a really specific manner for some reason. And it's like, I, I'm, I, I don't feel like I'm working with them. I'm working like, like, yeah, they're almost, they're working through me. Like, especially with mixing, like some people just have this like very finite vision of what they want. And I understand that. And that, that's obviously great to have a vision for what your record or song should be. But it's like, at some point, it's just mixing through me. Like you're just telling me, turn this fader up one db and i'm like is this really making the song better probably not you know um yeah well, you were kind of on points <laughs> well, too, it, it's it's the honestly like it's the it's the fucking i mean i'm not even i'm talking like i'm i have produced hey, yeah but you've but been around it so. it's the it's the close-mindedness of of yeah. these musicians right that like you know like i guess i understand it more because i'm a freelancer like i do my own thing right um with video work but honestly, like, you know, when we're, like, we're recording with Luke and like, we've been tracking new songs like nonstop recently. And half the time Luke will look at me and he's like, what do you think? I'm like, dude, you're the fucking producer, honestly. Like, and I wish more mm -hmm. bands just thought that way. Like, he's the fucking producer. You hired him. Why the fuck are you questioning every last thing that he does? Why? Why'd you hire him? Do it yourself. Honestly, do it your fucking self. Because you hire someone. I feel like you should trust them. It, you know, you should have your opinions. Don't get me wrong. But you should trust them with your with your song because you heard their mixes and you mm -hmm. heard what they do, and you should trust that they know what's best. They're the professional. Like, yeah, I don't I don't go on video sets. Like, I'll maybe I'll make a suggestion. Yeah, just because I'm like that's how I see things. But at the end of the day, it's I'm not going to question Matt's judgment as to what might look best. Yeah, or might work best for the video, especially with the back and forth too. With like a lot of people, it's like. I don't get it a lot on set anymore because I've been doing it for long enough where people are like, if they say something and I go, you know what? No, no, no. Let's do this instead. They're like, okay. Like, but in the past or like even the stuff, you know, even like hearing about other, what other like people deal with, with their clients, it's just like, oh my God, this is the back and forth that people get. It's like, why the fuck are you hiring? Like, what, What's the point of hiring someone if you're just going to argue with everything they say? Like, I don't know. It, it's, it really is just one of those things where it's like, you know, do you go to the coffee shop and, and tell them like how many grams of beans to put in the fucking <laughs> porta filter? No, like, right. You just yeah. pay them to make your coffee and you take it and you drink it. And, yeah, like, and if you and don't like it, you, you go somewhere else. If you don't like it, you try something else. Exactly. But you got to give the creative person a chance to show them, to show what they have. Um, and, you know, if you don't like it, maybe that they're just not right for you for the next thing but and, that, and that's okay that's too. fine it's, yeah i've i've let go of clients and vice yeah. versa just because for whatever reason it just wasn't the right fit and absolutely i, I tell them like I, I want you to make your best record it's not it's not up to me to you know make that call all the time sometimes they got to say like listen it's just it's just not working and that's fine because it's their vision at the end of the day right it's their piece of music or their video yeah, it makes sense to be passionate about your project, but I've I've always kind of looked at it like um 
like going to like the barber, right? Like you can show them a picture, <laughs> but like they're going to work with your head shape. They're going to like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's not going to be exactly that. Or getting a tattoo. I've had times where I'm getting a tattoo and I think I'm getting it up here and now it's being moved down here because I'm talking to someone who knows who does this. Yeah, I think it's really important to be super malleable with the people mm-hmm. you're working yeah. with. And especially when you're thinking about like a mix on a song, it's a very mm-hmm. sort of like, I guess like, I can't think of the right word for it. Almost like an ethereal vision you're having of what it's going to sound like. You're using your imagination. Yeah, Yeah, it's esoteric. You're using your imagination to picture a sound. You're not actually hearing it in your head. I do it all the time when I'm like thinking up riffs in my head or something like that. Like Mm -hmm. you're like doing this weird imagination Mm -hmm. game with yourself. So yeah, I definitely think it makes sense to like let go of the reins a little bit with a professional. I tell everybody it's it's just an interpretation. It's my interpretation of what the band sounds like. And obviously, mm-hmm. if you have if there's things within that that, you know, you maybe want to feature something more like feature more of the guitars, the vocals or whatever, that's totally fine. But it's like this is how other people hear you. Right. And right. Maybe you have something very specific, but it's like I I can't read minds. I can only, you know, give you what I see and, you know, how I feel about the band. So. I try to, you know, I, I try to have a lot of conversations with bands. I'll have meetings. We'll have plenty of uh, references, all kinds of things. But um, like I said, it, it's that open mindedness to the process and just understanding that at the end of this, like this is just the amalgamation of everything. You know, everybody who's part of the, the project, everybody who's on the team, all the work you've put in, the time period, you know, because sometimes, you know, maybe your vocals just weren't as good two months ago when you recorded it. Right. So you never know. It's it's yeah. That's always the case. Yeah, it's it's also <laughs> oh basically impossible to analyze your own art yeah. in like a non-biased way, right? You're part of the process. So like an objective set of ears can be yeah, really helpful if you're open-minded. Uh so Matt, yeah, um you you seem to have a lot to get off your chest. What's your biggest pet peeve <laughs> when you're shooting? Um I would say uh I would say like backseat driving is my biggest pet peeve when you go on set and there's always not always, honestly, I'd say like 10% of the time, there's that one person that's like, I don't know. Honestly, it's not a lot of bands that do this. It's mostly like corporate work, honestly, that I do, where it's like someone's just on your shoulder and they're looking at you and they're just like, oh, are you sure about that? And I'm just like, like you're paying me a lot of money right now to be here. And like, I think I know, like, I think yeah. I fucking know what I'm doing. Like, why are you yeah. paying me all this money for me to fuck it up? Like, I'm not fucking up. And then after they're like, oh, it looks so good. I'm like, well, I'm glad I didn't take your suggestion. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, that's probably my biggest pet peeve is, is backseat driving on set where people are trying to tell you what to do. And they literally have no experience with directing or cinematography or cameras in general at all. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're like, what if you did this? What if you do this? What if you did that? I'm like, guys, <laughs> it's not even my work anymore if I just do everything you say, because then I'm changing all my angles and lighting for them then I'm putting my name on it and it's not even me anymore. Right. Cause you're basically right? maintenance at that point. Yeah. I'm just doing what they're saying. And I take, I do take a lot of jobs that are like uh camera operating jobs where I'm just literally holding the camera and someone else is telling me what to do. But if I mm-hmm. know that's what I'm doing, that's fine. Yeah. It's right. more so when someone hires me to be a, uh, like a DP or a director, and then they're telling me what to do. And I'm just like, <sighs> I'm like, I know you watch a lot of like a 24 movies, but you do not know everything about cinematography <laughs> and neither do I honestly, but I know yeah. more than you just like Luke knows more than everyone that comes in here to record with him for the most part in terms of mixing and stuff. That's why they're here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes I don't, sometimes somebody gives me a great piece of advice and, that, and that's, that's fine. It's just, like I said, it's when it's all the time, it's everybody has to be open. Like if I was stubborn about it, yeah, you know, then it also wouldn't work. Oh, and haggling is my, is my, <laughs> is my fucking, you can tell there's nemesis. a bit of a laundry list here. Yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah no, I, want, I wanted to let him vent. The whole, this yeah. whole question was around, set up around letting him vent. This is just uh, uh, your therapy session. Yeah, yeah. listen, yeah. Man, let routine. it out. Being, being a being a like being a freelancer and stuff like that it comes with so many challenges. Yeah. Honestly, like there, there's just clients that will text you every day for a, Mid- at midnight. A month. Yeah, at midnight, <laughs> a month leading up to a shoot, they're te- they're texting you every day, and it's just like holy fuck like this is a lot you know what i mean mm-hmm. and um so you know it's just things that you have to deal with and stuff like that but i honestly would rather do that than go into a nine to five any day like you know yeah. what i mean so 
there's just there's negatives with everything and i think like yeah i can have my pet peeves on set but i'd rather be on set with uh freaking like whatever karen down my neck than mm -hmm. uh than being in an office crunching numbers so i really right. can't complain that much so what's the best way for uh what what way do you guys prefer that people get in touch with you about getting uh videos done or music mixed and mastered and recorded you want to start oh probably honestly probably email email or dm you know just hit me up like i usually i have my email in my bio so i just or um yeah my instagram page so i thought you email me because it's just way more organized than getting like random dms from luke's like fucking memes and then i have my business emails just looped in i got my bandmates fucking talking shit in the group chat like <laughs> there's just a lot of messages right so yeah. email is a great place we well, also just uh set up your website again oh yeah my website yeah my website's back up too now so is that specter light yeah yeah spectralight.ca yeah so i just reset that back up there's no contact actually i gotta put a contact uh I didn't even think about that. I should have put that on there. I, yeah, it's like the amateur hour. Yeah, I know. It's it's not even a, yeah, it's like one of those. It's like one of those bars with no sign. Yeah. You know, honestly though, like usually it's just DMs, honestly, or texts, like or emails. That like that's the majority of it. But email is the best. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm the same. Uh, I prefer if people would go on my website. I do have a contact form on my website. So my website's my full name, LukeShieson. dot com. That's how you pronounce it. <laughs> um, I wasn't and, even gonna uh, try. Yeah, it's all I was good. Just gonna let Every you guys handle that. Everybody <laughs> screws it up. Um, yeah, if you go on my website, there's a contact form. Uh, you have to fill it out. It just gives me some details about you, the artist, uh, and sort of what you're looking for, and just kind of helps me filter out some questions that I might have otherwise, like right off the top. Um, you know, like things like budget, what kind of project it is, all that stuff. A little bit about your band. Let me hear your band. All that stuff um so yeah hit me up on my website you could also just dm me of course but uh i just might not get back to you right away obviously because like matt was saying we got lots of messages from all kinds of people so yeah i'll, I'll hit you up on your website dude yeah, yeah so we should that, work man. together yeah, yeah we should yeah <laughs> have you guys ever uh considered the idea of like just merging as a production company we kind yeah. of we haven't really gone into details because we've been focused so much on the music stuff recently but we kind of are trying to set up like a little like uh like retainer um like back and forth kind of like cut so he kind of suggests me i suggest him kind of thing mm -hmm. um just to like streamline some stuff and honestly it's kind of nice to be able to like go to a producer and like okay yeah where's the video coming from um especially with like well most people end up hitting me first obviously yeah they record the, the song music, obviously so then, right I need song, yeah to you. but also there's bands that hit me up that are like who do you record with and stuff and now obviously yeah it's like course, you yeah. um but i think like yeah we've we've talked about it and i think that um especially now with yeah the band and the band and like um i'm kind of like back doing more like solo work and stuff like that not really doing much with portrayal anymore because that isn't much of a thing anymore so i'm kind of like rebranding myself a little bit and i think that like yeah luke and i are definitely going to try to like streamline some stuff where we can kind of like share clients and try to like get the scene on board and i think yeah it just keeps the quality up in the scene um having like you know professional stuff i mean luke did the dead root song mm -hmm. recent dead root song and then i did the music video and it was sick because it sounded sick and it looked sick yeah well and i mean that that was always my thing too why i referred people to matt was because you know i'd worked with bands countlessly for so many years and it had just they wouldn't put out a video or the video wouldn't be very good. So I really just started referring people to Matt. Cause I was like, I want it to look as sick as it sounds. And I feel like it goes way farther, you know, and, and we've seen it with the anecdote stuff where you guys are just reacting to the video, <laughs> you know, being, being like, wow, this is like, this is a new band or they just put out one song. Right. Like to me, it's like, that's really, really important. And so, yeah. Um, yeah. For years I've been, pushing Matt's work and as well as other videographers too, like Brett, like I was saying earlier, who did the primal abyss video. Some great, some, some great shooters. And, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, some sick video quality work, quality audio. Like that's, that's what counts. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've never found that a bad video ruins a song, but a great video can really enhance a good yeah, song. Absolutely. I find, I okay, maybe it's cause I do videos. I just find when I watch <laughs> bands videos that are kind of bad, I'm just like, I'm like, it makes me feel like they don't care. Yeah. And then it makes me not want to care. 
five right? awkward hardcore dudes standing in a room like and well, the shots are too long and like yeah you know, and i'm just like i'm just like it makes me feel like the band's just like okay yeah the song's fucking sick but like the the, the band image and the song honestly are equally as important like the song's gotta yeah, be fucking yeah. sick but the image of the bands it's gotta be there and it, the thing is nowadays that you don't have to be that like super pro band all the time you can post your funny tiktoks and reels and you can mm -hmm. you can post your phone videos and stuff like that you don't always need that but to be able to go back to something professional and to see that they cared enough to put their time and energy into this it makes me want to care about the band it makes me think they're taking it seriously and at the end of the day it makes me want to support them more because i i just feel like i'm just you know people in the scene like i don't want people to half ass it when i hear a good song I'm like go all the way mm -hmm. like go all the way you can fucking do this you can get your song big you can make it like let's fucking go you know there's so many good bands that unfortunately like their success falls flat for various different reasons but the music is always the music's there like i want to see people succeed and i think the band image thing is the is the is the factor that a lot of people are missing in my opinion mm -hmm. creating a so, personality around it are you guys you yeah. guys are aware of the band clockwise for example I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah the, the band just with an immediate like identify. Panic response was great at that too. Actually, they have an yeah, immediate, understandable vibe to what they're yeah, doing. And yeah, it creates, yeah, absolutely. It creates something bigger than you know five yeah. dudes in cargo shorts. Yeah, that's why they did well. That's why they did well so quickly in the scene, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'll glaze you guys up a little bit. I have heard the newest single. Safe to say, I really, really enjoyed it. I also really like the Redux because when you hear "Safe to Say." It's it it's so apparent how well it's gonna work in a more toned down and sort of acoustic environment. Um, we loved Lie Awake on the channel. Uh, yeah, you guys, we saw that. You yeah, yeah, we yeah. saw the reaction. Yeah, That's like fair. like Phil especially, he always falls in love with like very very like like power poppy like emo stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, we were both blown away by it. I really like the Everlong cover. I want to cool. give a shout out to that. I really think that um, there was an expected way that you could do it. And you guys really added a, a flavor to it that I let was so subtle in the way like you would just have like like chuggier sort of verses in it. And like the layering in the chorus that you added as like like in the background, like it really brought the song into like being like a naked burn song after we started listening to you guys i listened to all the music i went back to smoke which came out last year like april i think yeah mm -hmm. I, if i remember correctly um did luke produce on that as well no so actually yeah so far i did the redux version i produced that from the ground up okay the uh, safe to say's rock version i only so me and my uh, production partner, Kyle, he's also in the band. He's, he's the bassist. Um, we did some production, but up until Safe to Say and like when Lie Awake came out was basically when we were officially a band as opposed to a solo project. So right. before that, it was just Matt and uh, the previous producer, Dan Bell, yeah, doing all the material. Uh, and then when we joined, we kind of took things over. <laughs> you yeah. fucking stole you stole you stole me it because caught i'm caught yeah Ka kyle kyle has been kyle was bothering me for so long about working with him on on some music um because i was working with dan and like dan's kind of uh kyle's like protege in a way like kind of like you know kyle gives him some advice and stuff like that over the years about mixing and stuff like that um and then I realized that Kyle and Luke had a studio together and then Luke joined the band. And then you know, we were doing this live session here. And then I was like, yo, Kyle, you're trying to just like play bass on this live session. I'm like trying to weasel him into the band. Um, it worked. Yeah. Um, and now, yeah. And now all the stuff moving forward, including the Redux is going to be produced, done in produced. house. Yeah. It was a solo thing up until yeah. then. And honestly, the new stuff is. It's a different world. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's, <laughs> Like yeah, I know it'll a lot do better of, on the back. Yeah, I know. It'll do better on the back. Too. I think a okay. lot of okay. yeah. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I think a nice. lot of so that, that actually are... gets me excited. That's sick. A little heavier. 
Yeah, a lot of bands uh, kind of say like, "Oh yeah, the new stuff, whatever." Blah blah. blah. But like, in reality, like actually, it's fucking insane. Like I, like honestly, I I question like wiping the catalog. You know, like I not (laughs) safe to say, but sometimes I question wiping the catalog. You got to keep my awake. It's good. Yeah. Okay. Maybe those. Yeah. But Hanging Blues. I think this guy kind of like, but I guess I kind of like stuck too. I still like the old songs. <laughs> I like, I like uh, all the songs. I yeah, like the, I, I, I still I like hear a bad one. I still like the old stuff, but I think that like the new stuff is just so different, and we've come such a long way um, in terms of like the writing and even like my vocals and stuff. And like, yeah, Luke has been writing a lot of the new ma- like new material. Like me and Luke have been like going fucking hard writing songs, yeah. like crazy. Well, that was it. It was naturally because. I started writing with the band it's changed in sound yeah but you know i'm still retaining what i can from the original naked burn sound like i'm not trying to change that no um it's just i would say matured in a lot of ways yeah because it's before yeah before i was focused on you know writing guitar riffs and vocals um and it was just one just the producer you know me and dan in his basement and it was just a lot like i I think I was biting off more than I could chew by having to write all of that stuff. And he, he co-wrote a lot of it with me, but like now just like having Luke come to me with like a full demo instrumental. And he's like, what would you sing over this? So I can just focus on singing. Yeah. Like, and that makes such a big difference. Cause I don't have to be thinking about guitar riffs all day. I can be mm-hmm. thinking about how to get my vocals sounding better. Cause I'm a, I'm a guitarist way before I was a singer and I just started singing cause I couldn't find a fucking vocalist. And so I kind of like forced myself to get better at singing so I could have a band. And now I realize I need to focus more on the vocals since now I'm fronting the band with no guitar. Um, like live, I just sing. So I'm like, I can't suck. Mm-hmm. So I'm very pin focused on it, which has made everything better because like everyone can focus on their own tasks. Like, you know, Luke can focus on writing the guitar riffs. Um, and Rob comes in and adds his like flavor on the guitars and Kyle comes in and it's, you know, what would Kyle do? And he kind of adds his like production flair onto there and gives his like suggestions and stuff. And then I can just fucking sing. Like, yeah, honestly, you can just be the singer. I could just fucking be the singer, yeah. which is weird, but it's fun, <laughs> I guess. It's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's always reminded me of um, I've always been like 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 all the band stuff I did back in the day. I was always like primarily a vocalist, even though I played guitar. And I I always had trouble like if I wrote riffs, I would just like go like dumb brain. And now I just can't mm-hmm. write vocals over it. And I don't know why. Like it just like doesn't translate to me. So I've always found that I'm like if you hand me a blank piece of paper, I'm not that great. But if you just give me like some like stuff to color in and I mm-hmm. can really hone on that, I can do a much better job. And I think that, yeah, it makes sense to like hone your task instead of like putting all this pressure on yourself to do everything from scratch like you you're not like you're not like out with the flour now making the pasta anymore someone's making mm-hmm. the pasta and all you got to do is cook it i don't know if that was a good analogy <laughs> but i just thought of it that. Makes sense. Um, well, I, okay i think <laughs> i'm still making the pasta with luke sometimes but yeah. it, it's like I mean, okay, the other day was, like, a perfect example. Like, we just popped in the studio for, like, four hours. Yeah, and we just, just, like, two, three days yeah, ago. Yeah, two, three days ago. And that's the thing, too, is, like, it's, like, a blessing having Luke and Kyle in mm-hmm. the band because I just – we live so close, too. We live around the same area. We're all in Toronto. And I just call Luke up. I'm, like, yo, I'm having the worst fucking week, which is pretty much every week. Um, and then I'm, like, yo, we, we got it. We yeah, got yeah. it. We got to get into the studio, like, tomorrow. And he's, like, all right, it's free. Okay, let's go. And – we just end up fucking like cooking up some fucking like crazy shit. And, um, and like, that's kind of been the workflow recently and I'm fucking loving it, honestly. And mm-hmm. I've never felt like so good about anything that I've done. Honestly, even like, that's awesome. Yeah. Even with the video work and stuff too, like this is like, this the is your band baby. is, this is my baby. The band is my priority, honestly, even though it's like mm-hmm. making me no money and it probably won't for a long time if it ever does. But this is like what I want to do. And like, I think like Luke being having Luke in the band and all the guys committed, it's just like, and there's five of us that want to make this happen. Like we're going to fucking do this, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Is that a, do you have, is that a Larry tattoo on your? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've I've got a little bit of Larry too. Yeah. yeah, He makes me wish I lived in Toronto. I'm saving some spots just for the next time I see him. Shout out Larry and shout out his band. (laughs) Yeah, crosshair, crosshair. crazy. Yeah. I his vocal delivery on that was so unexpected. 
<laughs> so it's sick. wild. It's wild. So you guys have probably been asked this before, but uh, where does the band name Naked Burn come from? We were just talking about. We were like, uh, it's a <laughs> it's a fucking Mastodon song. Okay. Yeah, I was just scrolling songs one day, and uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's, about all that, that's yeah. real. That's <laughs> real. That, I like that's that. all she fucking wrote. Yeah, and honestly, I like the name now a lot, and we get a lot of compliments on it. So I think it's a decent band name now. It, it matches the music. I feel like I don't know. What do you think? I think it matches really well. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's, I remember like bands like Jude the Obscure and like stuff like that, mm-hmm. where it's like, you didn't read that book. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, you just yeah. saw a name you saw. It was cool, but they have to like embellish yeah. this story about yeah. what the, so I, I appreciate the just blunt. No, it was this. It's just a Mastodon song, which so, is yeah. so, yeah, it's kind of like um, Between the Buried and Me is like a Counting Crows lyric, right? I like yeah. the idea that like you've taken from a genre that sounds infinitely different than what you're yeah. doing. And it's, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Even like my website, or even like, yeah, like Spectra Light, that's a Mastodon song too. I was on oh, a roll. Wow. You really like Mastodon. <laughs> yeah. Right? I used to die for Mastodon. Mm-hmm. Just, like, I fucking love Mastodon. I saw them yeah, there was live cool. with Children of Bodom. It was fucking sick. I found that, um, and you can let me know what you think, but I found that um, in 2024, like what we consider like pop punk and emo, there's like, like they're more or less like synonymous with each other at this point. Like it's almost like this like blended thing. And -hmm. I remember mentioning in our reaction that you guys feel like an, like a homage to when like emo was like a distinguishable genre that existed. Like you would never call like Bayside or say a sin or dashboard, like a pop punk band. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But nowadays it seems like it's just this interchangeable label with this like very like, tiktok focused like sound that's come out so did you guys like was that like intentional on your end when you started this that you wanted to like pay more homage to like the taking back sundays of the world than just like writing poppy emo stuff honestly i am not a pop punk guy even though i literally look so much like one at the moment (laughs) with this whole hat and trad tattoos and shit um but like i i don't really listen to a lot of pop punk um like i never really got into you know the story so far and neck deep and wonder years like i i don't listen to those bands i'm like a i'm like a citizen balance of composure title fight basement movements like that i'm that flavor of emo and so um and honestly i didn't even really listen to like like dashboard or like um like like the the two thousands like emo bands like I didn't really listen to that much of that either like maybe like brand new I was really into um I was into like sunny day real estate for a while but like mm-hmm. I never really listened to all the super like popular stuff until it was like the twenty ten stuff like I was just talking about like those twenty tens bands um and so honestly all the stuff is basically just ripped off of 2010s um like bands like that and even even now like honestly the stuff is changing a lot but it still has that like 2010s like nostalgia to it but like it's so much more modernized now like well i think that's where we all yeah all the members of the band converge at really liking those bands you mentioned like citizen and everything i definitely listen to more pop punk than you do yeah yeah um but that being said I'm a little bit older than you. Matt's the youngest guy in the band, right? Yeah. You're, yeah, you're youngest guy. So that's also part of it. <laughs> I missed a lot of those bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I grew up with, like, you know, Say Is In and all those bands. And so so as soon as I joined the band, I was like, yeah, we should, like, actually do, like, real emo music and not yeah. just, you know, pop punk. So even on Safe to Say, despite it being probably the poppiest song to date, um, a lot of the influences going in, like just for like the lead guitars and stuff, I was trying to channel Sayos in. Say yeah, I remember uh, that, yeah. For the Redux version, even though there's like a bit of that Dayseeker kind of Dayseeker, yeah. inspiration, we actually uh, we just kept saying this song pretty much is like blurry. Like, puddle oh, mud, yeah, puddle <laughs> mud, yeah, yeah. That's Which our that's our pump not, up song. Now yeah, it's not really like an emo song, but it is in a way. Yeah, and so I don't know, just a lot of mix of influences, and I think too, like at the end of the day, like. Yeah, some people have called us a pop punk band and, you know, I'm not stoked on being called a pop punk band because I really don't think we are. Um, just just based on the bands that are actually pop punk, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I think it's a fucking sick genre. It just hasn't ever really been for me personally. Um, but yeah, like, we're just going for that straight emo sound. I think it's like, the stuff we're writing, it's too melancholy 
to be considered pop punk. It's just mm -hmm. too depressing. Mm -hmm. Like it's too like sad. It's not like you can put like you're not really gonna put it on. And like oh, I guess you could put it on to you know have a beer with your friends. What do you think? No, it's more of like you a want to have a depressing party. Too. Yeah, <laughs> you want to have it. <laughs> but it's more like okay, instead of driving up to the cottage with your friends and you're having the best time, and you're listening to pop punk. It's more like. You just picked up your friend and they had a bad day and you're blasting what we make. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's a, more of that kind of like melancholy outlet where it's like, if you like that, like sad, you know, that sad music on a day to day, put us on. If you want to like have that sad, but like still feel good. That's where pop punk, I feel like comes in, in a really like perfect place um, where you still want to have that like sadness, but you're like, you know what? I wouldn't mind feeling better. Like, I don't think we would make you feel better we honestly like honestly some of the best bands make me feel worse like that's i don't fair. know about that's you guys fair. but like do you ever put on a, like a band you love and you're like honestly my day's worse yeah. well like, I, I think i think i've done this thing where it's like um you listen to music that feels you like it it like in a almost toxic way like you like perpetuate your own mood with it and you like yeah. justify oh, yeah. your experience like <laughs> instead of moving on from the emotion you're like no I, I should be dwelling on this. I should be. It's like crying in the mirror. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 100%. Yeah. That's where we come in. <laughs> so um, with like, I guess the current wave of stuff you guys are writing, um, is, a is a lot of it like coming together and just jamming stuff out of scratch or are people bringing like more skeletons of written stuff to the table? Luke obviously has a lot of time to just riff and record. Yeah. Honestly... Lately, it's, yeah, it's 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 usually it'll start with you just have sort of a mood that you're in, <laughs> <laughs> totally. and, and and just no, like, but legitimately, like, I'll, I'll pitch a lot of ideas to the band. Like, I'll just like record some riffs that I come up with, and we throw them in a in a folder, and I'll just kind of you know send them out. Be like, what do you think of this? And if anything sticks, that's sort of where our jumping point is. But to be honest, like. For at least two of the songs it just started with matt being like i'm feeling depressed right now you want to go to the studio like, write a literally. depressed riff yeah he has like <laughs> maybe a line not even really like any chords or melody and i'll mm -hmm. just listen to it and just like start playing something and and then yeah and i just go three hours the... later we have a finished song so. i know i just go in the booth with some fucking like luke's just like okay what if you went like do -do 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 -do. <laughs> like some shit i'm like done <laughs> I start writing lyrics yeah. down that like match that melody. I just go in the booth. I basically just freestyle. We're not a we're not a band that jams and writes yeah. stuff at jam because, funny enough, it's because our drummer lives uh, a little bit farther from everybody else, so and he mm. has less time than everybody, so we don't have time to just like like mess around really. Like we, anytime we practice, it's actually just rehearsing. rehearsing for shows and you and like also we write stuff to demo like we never have songs yeah that aren't demoed out it, like we never have stuff that's like in practice but ever. i think i think it's right. just our at this point the chemistry with the band and also just the experience of every, all the members having played in a bunch of bands and everything and understanding you know like the importance of uh like getting things done um anytime we are writing we are very much right like usually it'll start with me and matt but when we are writing, we are very much thinking of like, okay, this is probably what this person's going to do. Or this is probably like what they are like, w would want to hear in the song. So I don't know, like, at least for me anyways, I'm just, I'm kind of writing with everybody in mind. Mm -hmm. And by the time mm -hmm. that I hand them the song or, you know, when they hear it, if they are making suggestions, it's already like we're on the same page. Like it's, it's a really oh, yeah. unique situation. It, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very strange. And it's also like, we write purposely for what we need as a band. So yeah. like we're writing this EP right now. Um, and like, it's, it's like, okay, we have this one song. Okay. This is the more like commercial song that we wrote. Right. Okay. This is the, like the poppier song. Like it's a little catchier. It's a little lighter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then Luke writes this fucking banger heavy song that we just finished recording. Today. It's, it, yeah. Today <laughs> we just finished it today and it's like fucking heavy and it like has, I'm not gonna spill too much, but it has like a yeah. full on breakdown in it. Yeah. Um, which is like fucking it's, sick for new for us. It's fucking sick. I'm already spilling too much. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. No, no, it's not. It's not. It doesn't have a breakdown. <laughs> the song sucks. Um, and and then the other day we were like, oh dude, let's write a fucking like mid-tempo, like drowning, like drowning out, like balancing composure, yeah. like 
And and then so well, that's we what just, I'm saying is it's like yeah. you write with a mood in mind. Yeah, like, it's I, a, I want to write a song. Well, actually, that one it was funny enough was me. Who yeah, instigate. I was like, I have this idea, this and then concept, I'm like, let's go in. And I just handed it to Matt, and just said, like I had one riff, and the next you know, I had fucking lyrics written down within it's a blur thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, within thirty minutes, I have all the lyrics written down, and honestly, yeah. I feel like in a way, I mean, I think all musicians can can testify to this. It's like I think that realistically you make your best music when you're doing the worst low key and this has been a fucking shit summer for me so i'm kind of glad for it yeah we're capitalizing on his yeah they're, they're, kind, <laughs> of, they're kind of taking advantage of my yeah, yeah they're kind of taking advantage of my misery um at the moment but <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i feel so much better now after the last couple months of writing all this shit to know that like i put that shit to use and i wasn't just sitting around and like right. making the worst that's a good, like, that's, yeah it's a healthy way of looking at it yeah i wasn't making the worst out of it i put it to use and like you know maybe sometimes i self-sabotage myself so i can have more writing material but man, it's all it's all in the name of making it man <laughs> like when i'm when i when we fucking made it i'm gonna think oh, i'm so glad i had all that girl drama honestly <laughs> just feeling that fire just feeling the fire baby yeah. Woo! good to go so <laughs> as an old man um, the thought of making any sort of like TikToks or TikTok adjacent stuff has always freaked me out, despite the fact that it would probably be like good for this channel. Um, so I, I noticed that you stay um, like relatively active with stuff like that. I don't think you do like the overly cringy, like, did we just write the emo song of the summer sort of thing with like. We did. We did kind of. Well, we no, did, I, I, yeah. I've watched a few of them. You've Trust me, I've seen yeah, much, yeah. much worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, do you find, so do you think that those sort of like social media things right now are a useful tool or do you feel like it's more, it's become more this like necessary barrier that you're forced to push? I, Kate, okay. let me, let me start by saying that I'm with you. I'm the old man being like, I hate yeah, TikTok. Old. Yeah. So already, I think that kind of has a healthy balance between us. <laughs> because yeah. that's why we're not overly posting as well. Well, right, okay. Honestly, lately, I've taken a bit of a step back on TikTok in particular, just because I started to get irritated with the platform. I find that it's a very inconsistent platform and it's hard to, f to learn. Um, it's very irritating. And um, I find that even if your following is growing, it doesn't mean necessarily your content is going to be growing and the engagement isn't going to be growing. Um, whereas on Instagram, I see a consistent growth in terms of the followers and those followers actually converting into people who listen on Spotify, who reply to our stories, who we get messages from. Like we get messages like almost every day being like, hey, I just found your band or your band's fucking sick or someone posting our music to their story or something like. Um, and so we, I found that Instagram is doing that a lot for us right now. And, you know, we create a lot of professional content, as you can see on Instagram, like a lot of our stuff is very pro that like either I've shot or Alex from portrayal has shot in the past. And so we're, you know, we care a lot about our brand, like our band image and stuff on there. Um, in terms of TikTok and stuff, I think it is a necessary evil. Um, and me and Rob have been brainstorming stuff to like get back on the TikTok and stuff like that. But realistically, honestly, I find the best stuff that does well on TikTok is actually the dumbest thing. It's just shit posting. And it's just me putting out my phone and waving to the camera and saying hey we're a band from toronto called naked burn this is our new song and i'm just basically just being cringy as fuck and like trying to be like cute towards the camera and it, it honestly that is what does the best on tiktok in my opinion and the, from what i've experienced and i think that on tiktok you are aiming for a different um target audience and you yeah. need to realize the target audience that you're aiming for um, and you need to kind of cater towards those types of people. The types of people on TikTok are people who want to feel like you're a normal person, that you, they're connected to you, that they can comment on your post and you'll reply um, and you'll interact with them and be friends with them. Like you're just another friend for them, right? Like I, I've had people just randomly start telling me stories and comments saying, oh, yeah, I haven't had a good night. Like not even like I haven't had a good night and your song is like, and your song coming through it. It's just like, Oh, I'm just not having a good night. And I'm like, oh, what happened? And they're like, oh, I'm just having anxiety. Like I'm having a conversation in the comment section with some random person. And I, I, that's when I clued in. I was like, these people just, they just want friends, honestly. And so I think moving forward, like I think a lot of bands need to treat TikTok as a different platform and need to think about that audience, that it might be a bit of a younger audience that they need to cater towards. Um, 
and yeah. it's a lot of it's a lot of girls too on tiktok way more like uh like like women are using tiktok i find than men especially in the in your 20s like more women in their 20s use tiktok by far than men in their 20s and i feel like that's kind of what has become a little bit of our target audience um, well yeah I was, I was gonna jump in and say like, yeah i think it is the reason why it's a necessary evil in some ways it's not that evil <laughs> <laughs> the reason why it's necessary is because I think as a band, what's really important is you have to focus on cultivating an audience that aren't just bands. And that's kind of the hard part because mm -hmm. naturally being part of the music scene and playing shows, you know, you're obviously surrounded by other musicians and, and that's great. But if everybody is promoting, like wants to promote their own band, like they don't necessarily care about, care about your, your band. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. you need randoms. What, yeah, like what we're what we're trying to do, you know, while still trying to be authentic, mind you, is uh, we're trying to cater to people who don't play music and just want to enjoy a band, you know, and and mm -hmm. that we found so far uh, has been on TikTok and also just posting videos of of like like just different things, you know, like I I don't think people would care if we talked about our guitars and stuff, like you know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> Like, it's more about creating that genuine interaction with somebody who could be a potential fan, right? Yeah, and even the fans that are already on fans, whatever, if we even have any of those, but even the people who are already on our Instagram, a lot of the stuff that gets the most interaction half the time is just the videos where I'm just like, hey, guys, we just released this new song, or hey, guys, thanks so much for checking out our new song, whatever. Like, that always gets the most, like, yeah. story views, story likes, replies, like, People want to see that face to face, and I yeah. don't know why bands are so against it. And honestly, we've had honestly, we've had bands, and I've had people say to my face that like, "Oh, well, you guys only have bought this. Th oh, you guys, your 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 uh, first show only did well because you guys post so much on TikTok." I'm like, "So what? Why are you saying that? Like, yeah, it's a bad it's, thing. It used to like, be. Don't we want to sell our fucking it used show? To be you put your flyers. music in front of an audience, bro. Yeah, it was yeah, exactly. It's and they're like, oh, they're like, oh, I don't want to do that TikTok stuff because this is literally someone said this. I don't want to do that TikTok stuff because we want to grow organically. I'm like, what's more organic than finding people? Who are emo on the internet to listen to your yeah, music no, that doesn't that's cool that that's, doesn't even make sense. It, it yeah to, it used to be handing out flyers outside yeah. of venues it used to be having it you know giving out cds like it, it, there's always been some form of it and like i said like that's that's right now that's what's currently in so whether you like it or not if you want to be a good band and you make know, it like, yeah have an audience it sometimes you just got to do it it doesn't just <laughs> have to be TikTok though it's also just present on so on instagram and facebook too like there's yeah. a, a perfect example that i told rob about the other day was the band static dress um and they are a fucking like, amazing band one of my favorite bands mm -hmm. uh, like honestly of all time at this point and they don't really have a huge TikTok following like i know local bands who have a bigger following than them yeah. but they have a very good instagram presence their content is very professional looks fucking sick and they have a vibe going on and the vocalist is cool as fuck and he's hot like so Everything kind of adds into one thing. And this is the thing is like, they don't think these bands are thinking about this. They are, man. They're, all these bands, these big bands are all thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Like, you think that, you think. Or if not the band, somebody. Yeah, on right. Their team, you you yeah. think that, all, you know, and these are obviously huge bands, but you think Ollie Sykes and Noah from Bad Omens, they don't know that they're kind of like heartthrob emos. They know they're capitalizing oh, on that yeah. shit. They fucking know. And they're capitalizing on that. And so if you're going to be in a band and you're not capitalizing on these things, what are you fucking doing? Like, yeah, you know, if you're trying to make music it, to be heard. Yeah, if you're it's trying to make it as a band, you have to capitalize on what works for you and what your band is, like what, you know, the stuff that you have to think about your band as a whole. And like, wh what are your strong suits? What's your personality? And, and I know, I know some push? bands, I know some bands who don't do that and are successful and that works for them. And that's, yeah. that's fully, fine. but it's not all, it's not it's all, all about who your audience is. Exactly. It's all about yeah. the audience and what kind of music you're making. I just find people who yeah. listen to our stuff are very interested in having conversations. And like, we had random people at our first show come up to me and take a picture with me. I'm like, what are you, like, I'm just a fucking guy. <laughs> yeah, so. It was, it yeah. was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Even the first time I got recognize them and be like oh you're the dude from bandicotes like, what the fuck is this like you're like oh like i love your channel i'm like no what that can't be true what do you yeah mean? like what does that mean like yeah but people um, want that right people want to know that they can they, 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 they want to tell you they want to talk to you and stuff like that so like i mean even as a small band 
fuck man like there's there's got to be 10 people out there who want to fucking meet us and that is that mm-hmm. that like keeps us fucking going it's fucking sick well and with the tiktok thing too i forget exactly which guy it was um i think it might have been the do you remember the five four man whore guy that oh thing tx2 so, so here's the thing about that is i don't know if it was him but it was someone in that sort of lane from the same year and he was talking every he was like talking about like everyone's like calling him cringy and stuff for like his dumb tiktoks and he's like yeah and I spent years not being cringy and no one paid attention to my music. And mm. now everyone's dogging on me, but now I have a, like a following on Spotify. Now I'm getting booked yeah. for shows. So even the dudes who are on TikTok being super cringy, there's probably a lot more self-awareness going on than, you know, meets oh. the eye. They want you to share this. They, they want, want to be shared. They bait. want to be dogged on. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly. I don't I don't think that we would we would go into the rage bait category just because our music's like way too serious whereas tx2 definitely has lyrics and stuff yeah his songs exactly. that he can kind of do that with but like yeah i don't want to do the rage bait stuff but i don't mind the tiktok the tiktoks and just being fucking stupid on there like what is like what's the worst that's gonna happen if i set my phone up and wave at the camera like an idiot what some mm-hmm. some local band guy is gonna think i'm cringe they already think i'm cringe <laughs> like they already think it's yeah. cringe anyway it's not for them yeah it's not for them yeah and exactly it's not for them it's for the people who are gonna find it and go oh what band is this oh that's fucking sick let me follow them like i don't care if buddy from any 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 band cares whether or not i'm cringe honestly i couldn't care less so tiktok that's for fair. the win i think that more bands need to get on that shit and just stop like yeah. making it seem like it's some i don't know it, i think it's easy i think use the tools that are there for you and don't because like realistically like back in the day you needed a label to get big now you don't isn't that great mm. oh, yeah, but that, it's what you said it's a tool yeah it's a tool, it's a tool. yeah so anyways that's that we will get into some of the classic anecdotes questions. Um, these are uh, questions Phil's been asking people over the years. Um, so the first one is, um, do you guys have any entertaining stories from being in this band, previous bands, whether it's good, bad, ugly, weirdest shows, weird sleeping situations, van problems, really weird interactions, anything like that? The floor. The, the floor in Ottawa? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's not even that fun. It's not even that funny, yeah, right? yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a cool story because we, we basically we played in Ottawa. It was uh, our first like time as a band, like going anywhere together. Yeah, and, and we partied a little bit, um, <laughs> but we were staying at our buddies in Fifth. Uh, shout out to Fifth. Um, we were that. staying at their house, and the floors were very, very, very creaky. And uh, I was trying to sneak to bed and just woke everyone. Woke. Yeah, no, ma- no matter how, no <laughs> yeah. matter how quiet you tried to walk on these floors, it was like a fucking bomb went off. Like it was like <laughs> it was like a landmine. That's what Rob was saying. <laughs> yeah, and and, and uh, we were all laughing. Our drummer just woke our up. Our drummer, so- who's very very quiet, he and, party and like, like yeah, he's straight edge. He just like he just wanted wanted to go to sleep that night. He, he's not the guy to get in arguments. You know, he's very like chill. Um, but as I was trying to walk over to him and trying to ma- maneuver around all these inflatable beds and stuff uh he basically got up this is probably like 5 a.m yeah too. it was so late poor guy um just got up and started screaming God, shut, shut the fuck up shut the fuck up we have such a long drive tomorrow i'm like dude you think we want this floor to be like this right yeah. now like this floor is well, we, yeah we were trying to be quiet and then we all burst out laughing. yeah we all start laughing and he's just like why do you guys keep giggling we're like oh my god on tour is gonna be a nightmare yeah right? we're all gonna be is, like we're gonna hate each other in like a week yeah um, but yeah and honestly that, that like fucking even just going to ottawa like was fucking sick like just that's a fun time yeah. yeah i don't have any like crazy uh, do i show stories i mean i've had i've when i was like 16 i, I ripped my pants on stage that's probably that's one that's the classic right. play, is it because they were so tight oh uh, well i used to play in a crab core band guys so, so they <laughs> were tight they were those so those pants oh, were yeah. painted on and uh it was like front and center this is at the hard luck when it used to be called the poor alex um so yeah, what was that, the name of your crab core band uh, watch out for snakes. Oh my god, that's okay, such a fucking, there we go. We did a backstreet boys that's such cover. a crab core name too. I know yeah, I know all the all the dudes who uh are in the local. I can picture the shirt now with like oh, the yeah. walk the v-neck. cartoon character. That was that was back when you had to buy girl jeans in the women's section. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah they just didn't have men's. They didn't have jeans. men's it just wasn't a thing. Yeah. 
and yeah. We didn't have the technology. No, not yet. So that that was probably my wildest thing. I mean, I have plenty of producer stories, but that's a whole other topic. <laughs> yeah, I think I don't really have too many stories, but I just remember going on a little like weekender, like four or five day run with with single wound actually like years ago, and that was the first time I slept in a van with four other sweaty grown men and i cuddled cole frank to bed and i was was just like i don't want to do this (laughs) i was like i don't know if i'm built for for local tours honestly sleeping in the van i was like i don't fucking know i like beds or floors or anything i remember telling luke i was like dude whatever we do i don't think i could sleep in them in the van honestly i think we'd need to at least get like a place we could crash like on the floor on a sleeping bag or a blow up mattress. Like, I don't know if you've done tours and stuff. I don't know if you've done them, but I'm not a van sleeper. I don't think mm-hmm. I could do it. I think I need real rest. So actually, another story I have is one time we almost crashed. It was like a snowstorm. We were oh, on fuck. our way to Huntsville and turning off the, getting off the exit on the highway, we almost spun into the. Oh my line. God, dude. That would be fun. That would have been like a yeah. fucking metallic. Got moment. out of that alive. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Because you wouldn't even be writing riffs right now if you didn't. Yeah. What would I do? Do you guys remember your first show each? Like not as naked, but always oh, yeah. like your I mean my first real show. Yeah, it would have been actually I think, yeah, technically it would have been with that watch out for snakes band. Yeah. Uh I mean I played like high school things, you know. I don't really count that. Yeah. Uh but that band, yeah, like we played a couple shows around. Like we used to play at uh there's a place at Downsview Park here in Toronto that uh had a go-kart section <laughs> and Ooh, a nice. venue in the back. Yeah. That's oh, it was great. It was, it was awesome. Sick. Um, yeah, we played there uh, and it was okay. Don't, I think, I think we sound like shit naturally, but <laughs> I had a good time. For sure. I think people were definitely making fun of us. <laughs> Funny. People so, are making fun of any, yeah. any band. I got, I got hit with that exposure early. <laughs> yeah. Um, I used to be in this emo band called burgundy back in the day i was playing guitar in that band and i think the first show we played because yeah i played some like high school stuff but like you know what i mean it doesn't really count i think the first show we played was smiling buddha basement with uh this band called riot axe um which was another like emo post-hardcore event you remember riot axe no no yeah they i remember like, smiling buddha yeah oh yeah canceled um but they were like an emo post arcari band from Markham as well. And they we played the Buddha, the Buddha Basement. And it was fucking sick. I was stoked. It was sweaty. It was nasty. And I was like, you know, I was from the suburbs too. So I was like going in the city to play a show. And I was like, I'm so fucking cool. And I realized that it <laughs> really wasn't that cool. It was kind of ridiculous. But um, it sounded like absolute dog shit. But it was a sick night. And it, like, it made me like love, you know, local music and shit. I think, I think the biggest thing for me was the first local show actually – that I went to um, was in Newmarket actually at the jam spot. And it was like a bunch of hardcore bands from like 2016. It was like, it was like profits, ritual, purgatory, false hope. And like one other band I remember. And that was like insane. I was like, why are these people like swinging their arms around? Like nuts. <laughs> like I had never seen hardcore moshing before. I was like 15 and I just fell in love with that shit. I was like, this is fucking sick. I was like, a bunch of like weirdos in one room, you know? So that was cool. So what are your uh, go-to gas station snacks? I got a, at that auto run, I got beef jerky. Beef jerky? And a Mr. Big bar. Okay. Yo, shout out Mr. Big. Underrated bar. Underrated. (laughs) I'm a, I'm a peanut, I'm a peanuts guy, honestly. Fuck with a little pack of sriracha peanuts or something. Okay. I also can't eat shit because I'm vegan. So, <laughs> oh. I, 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 yeah, I don't even eat any. I just don't eat, honestly. So, no, I'm joking. I completely eat a lot of food, but I can't eat a lot of stuff. So, yeah, peanuts. Yeah. Best, best snack. Um, Do you guys have any shows coming up soon or anything that would be outside of the province? Are you guys doing yeah. stuff? A couple things, yeah. Yeah, nothing Around announced. Ontario? Yeah, nothing okay. announced, but we have a... Uh, the only thing announced right now is in, it, yeah. in Toronto, we have a show with Calling All Captains on okay. October 9th yeah. at uh, okay. the Dance Cave. Yeah, above Lee's Palace. Yeah. We are planning something cool in the winter. What about the Cambridge one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Fuck, we got a Cambridge show. Um, 
for that for it's like the tattoo convention shows and stuff that they're doing in Cambridge, the odd oh, whale stuff. Sorry. Um, yeah, October nineteenth. Yeah, so that's our like little out of Toronto endeavor. Um, but besides that, we don't have anything uh, now. So we we have some we have some big plans for the winter. We got some sick shit lined up that we're gonna be announcing in probably like October. So yeah, okay, nice, nice. Um, yeah, so I can give you guys last words. Uh, plug everything you want. Tell people why they should check you out. All that good stuff. What? Check us out if you're fucking sad. I guess. <laughs> there you go. That's, um, that's a you're you're really you're really going for a marginal demographic there. Honestly though, like <laughs> yeah, like fuck if you if you fuck with that 2010 shit and you like feeling nostalgic, definitely check our shit out and uh come say hi at a show. We like to meet new people. I don't know about the rest of the band, but I personally love meeting new people at shows, even if they don't like the music. I just like making new friends. So yeah, come out to a gig and say hi. How about your photography and the art? Oh, yeah, I guess fucking hire me for that if you want. This, yeah. <laughs> I'm so fucking... <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, if you want to you wanna need some videos and stuff like that, hit me up. Um, and uh, it's always good knowing that your videographer also plays music, so it helps with the vision for music videos, I find, when mm-hmm. people are actually musicians. So, yeah, hit me up. Okay. Yeah, check out... Uh, obviously, check out the band. We got lots of really cool new music coming out. Can't can't say one yet. Don't know exa- exact Bad plans. Man. Songs with no breakdowns. Big, big no things, breakdowns. Big things coming. <laughs> no big things coming. No songs. <laughs> big things yeah. coming. But like actually, big things coming. Um, you know, yeah. Hopefully that'll be sometime. I want to say in the fall, but obviously, the, you know, there's some discussions behind the scenes. Um, that being said, also check out uh, my website and all my work. Obviously, as a producer. Um, Again, it's my my website. It's my full name, L U C C H I A S S O N, Luke Shiasan. Uh, you can always hit me up there or on any social media platforms. I always say hi. Love to talk to people. And yeah, if not, catch us at a show. Come to Calling All Captains. That's, yeah, it's going to be a really be a good time. Show. Yeah. Them, Goalkeeper. It's going to be a really fun time. And uh, we're hoping to really pack that venue and make it. Uh, give everybody a warm Toronto welcome. Yeah. It's going to be fucking sick. We're trying to fucking pump that shit up. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming on. This has actually just like genuinely been so fun. I wasn't expecting us to even go this long, but like this Mm -hmm. was a super fun conversation. We'll have all of your guys stuff in our description as well so that people can easily go and check out all of it. Naked Mm -hmm. Burn, your music production stuff, your cinematography stuff. It's all linked down below. So if you want to get in touch with these guys, go down there or just even show them some love. And yeah, I've been stoked to have this conversation. Me and Luke have been talking about doing this for like months now. So I'm glad we could finally get in here and, you know, get this done. And yeah, guys, I'm sorry. I'm very bad at ending things, but it was <laughs> genuinely a pleasure. I yeah. really appreciate it. Thanks so much, man. Yeah. Yeah. You awesome. too. Awesome. Take care, guys. All right. See ya. Bye. All right, guys, that was our conversation with Naked Burn. What did you think? Let us know in the comments below. We do read them all. Go show Naked Burn some love. That was a really, really fun conversation. I just kicked them out of the room so I could do this outro with you guys. Hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. We have a join button down there. So if you want to help us keep this thing going, you can give us a couple dollars per month. That would really, really help us out. And if you are looking to do some mixing and mastering of your own, we do have a lander affiliation code that you can use down there below. Save yourself a little bit of money on some mixing and mastering stuff. Shout out Naked Burn. Shout out you. Peace.